Portraiture, Depiction of a Narrative. Hi, my name is Susan Andrews. I am a senior in my final semester at Adams State University. I am currently working on my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree with a concentration in painting. As an artist and a lover of all things wild, my interests lie in studying and developing art that brings awareness to issues facing wildlife and other creatures living in the wild. Inspired by stories I've heard and the things I've experienced, I tell their stories through my paintings. I do this through a form of portraiture. To understand what I do, you need to know the definition and a little history on what the portrait is. A portrait is a painting, a drawing, a photograph, or an engraving of a person, or an animal in this case, traditionally depicting the subject's shoulders and head or face. Since the beginning of human existence, portraits have been used to describe physical appearance and to emphasize status, power, and wealth. From ancient Egyptian wall paintings of gods and pharaohs, to Greek sculptures and Roman busts of powerful leaders and deities, portraits have played a role in shaping cultures and recording events in human history. They tell a story of the past. The first portraits of humans began to appear around 13,000 BCE in cave art. But the earliest portraits were of animals depicted in Paleolithic cave paintings that date back to 40,000 BCE. From the portraits of a bull found in the cave in Indonesia to over 420 animal paintings and engravings discovered in the Chevette Caves in France, these representations of predators and prey are narratives of the animals. They tell the story of a hunt, the animal's movement, and the activities witnessed by the earliest humans. Initially, I worked in watercolor, painting animals in traditional portrait form. My inspiration was derived by what I saw and experienced while on my daily walks along the banks of the Rio Grande River. This soon began to change for me. My approach to painting wildlife can be defined as portraiture, yet they are not portraits of a specific animal. They are depictions of a narrative. The animal is portrayed with an image that creates a story about a specific event or concern. Each piece is rendered by overlaying the image of the animal with a secondary image that supports the narrative. The secondary image is as important as the subject. It is the animal's story. This conceptual approach allows me to recreate the issues that face each creature. My goal is to engage the viewer and encourage conversation that leads to change in attitudes and efforts. The early stages of my concept of narrative began as I became more connected to the valley and the wildlife that live here. I began to learn about issues and events that directly affect the animals of this area, like the consequences the animals face when humans start a forest fire. This piece is taken from an actual event experienced by a volunteer firefighter. Then there's the trash that litters the environment the animals live in. This was painted from a photo I took at the disc golf course where the garbage cans were overflowing. There is the overpopulation of deer within the city limits of Alamosa and what they may eventually face in the future. The culling was the beginning of the layering concept for me. Leaving out detail, I began to use the color to tell the story, allowing the background to speak for the animal. And yet another story is the fate of the fawn. What happens when we think it has been abandoned and we call the authorities to help? These stories and events began to influence the direction of my work and the medium and materials that I used. I switched from watercolor and paper to acrylic and canvas. I began to work on a much larger scale. I used house painting brushes to paint most of each piece. When I hear stories of incidents that animals face due to our direct indifference and neglect, it really bothers me. 
Many times I can't shake the images in my head until I paint them. This piece is a new version of the burning bear from the spring's fire. These oral and written events I have been exposed to have brought me to where I am now. The animals are still the subject, but the background has become the story. Shattered was inspired by a story relayed to me about an elk being hit by a car. For the past nine months, I've been researching the issues surrounding the uncontrolled herds of feral and abandoned horses in the southeastern regions of the San Luis Valley. The following artworks are part of a series I am currently working on. They will be displayed at the BFA exhibition in the Cloyd Snook Gallery. The closing reception is tentatively set for Friday, August 28, 2020. This piece is titled Indian Rice Grass Dough. Indian rice grass grows throughout the open fields in the valley. It is high in protein and essential to the survival of deer, elk, and antelope during the winter season. The horses are destroying it, forcing these animals out of their wintering grounds. What were you thinking was inspired by a true event? This horse was abandoned in the valley with a bridle on. What happened to the horse is illustrated by the background. When using acrylic, I take a watercolorist approach. I use a wash of thin pigment and apply it to wet canvas to begin. The use of red aids in telling the story. Then I began to layer in the detail of the background. The horse was added the same way with the same layering technique. The Beast is my largest painting in the Feral Horse series and probably the most important one. The background is a real place. It is a perfect example of the impact these animals are having on the grasslands of the valley. To the right is the area the horses are fenced out of. You can see the Indian rice grass as well as the blue grama and Apache plume, all necessary foods for wintering wildlife. To the left, you see the damage the horses have done to the landscape. There is nothing left but rabbit brush, sage, and dirt. I photographed this location and began to develop my concept. The background was painted, and then the horse was layered in. My influences and inspirations, whether it be artistically, conceptually, or ethically, the following people are a few of the artists and environmentalists that have influenced my development as an artist. Aldo Leopold was an author and wildlife conservationist. He spent most of his life working towards game and forest management and restoration. He grew up in a country that was still wild and in an era that we can only read about. Leopold's account of the day he participated in the killing of a mother wolf was a turning point for him. It changed his perspective and led him to become one of our nation's most influential conservationists. He once said, there are some who can live without wild things and some who cannot. I have to agree, I cannot. Albert Durer became an influence for me when I returned to school in 2015. This is one of my favorite quotes of his. Nature holds the beautiful for the artist who has the insight to extract it. Jura was born a 15th century Northern Renaissance painter. He is known for his drawings, etchings, and woodcuts. During the Renaissance period, animals were not considered an appropriate subject for an artist, but he painted them anyway. I think that's cool. Jura's interest in nature and animals is not commonly known nor is his skill as a watercolor painter. Since watercolor is my preferred medium, this little known fact about Durer, not to mention his skill and attention to detail, is why I began to study his work. Edward Brzezinski is a photographer who works in large format, high definition cameras. He is an environmentalist who focuses on the impact that society and industry have on the environment. Brzezinski, photographs his subjects from high elevated platforms, planes, or drones, 
giving the viewer a new perspective of the landscape. Kortinsky's approach to his beautiful photography influenced my work, resulting in my painting, What Were You Thinking? He shows the beauty in the ugly. With my work and the message I want to convey, I don't feel the need to show the tragedy of these animals in explicit detail. Work in progress number one was well on its way to completion before the Colorado stay at home order was put in place. When finished, it will depict the image of the actual horse that was the victim. I will accomplish this by referencing the photographs I took of the animal the day after the accident. Horses face many dangers in the wild. They have no natural predators in the valley, but their lives are not easy. Besides the threat from vehicles, they suffer from injuries from other animals and lameness. They are shot and killed for no reason or chased by cars, but the worst is starvation. Because they have been allowed to roam unmanaged, they have eaten everything available. Many of the horses I have studied are in very poor condition due to lack of food. Work in progress number two will address starvation. I have several other concepts for this series that I am working on. The next piece in the series is still in the design stages. I will have it completed and displayed at the BFA exhibition in August. So stay tuned. Thank you.